my name is Dr. Josh Funk. I am a physical therapist. I've been a practicing physical therapist uh, since 2011. Graduated from the University of Maryland's physical therapy program, which is now almost a standard across the profession, a clinical doctorate degree. Uh, in the state of Maryland, we have something called direct access, which allows many people to come without a referral, which had to elevate the profession. If people are coming straight to us, we need to have a higher level of education and expertise to make sure that we are appropriately treating you and also recognizing sometimes when you need somebody who is not us. But my path to physical therapy started really just from an upbringing standpoint with uh, my passion in sports, my passion in physical activity. Um, was fortunate to be relatively healthy growing up and it was not until sophomore year of college when I was playing lacrosse at Ohio State that I had my first serious injury. I hurt my shoulder. I was diagnosed with a torn labrum and torn rotator cuff and told at the end of the season that I would need surgery. This is where this kind of whole problem solving uh, side of me and my passion really just to learning more about the human body came into play. Uh, working with my PT, Janine Ullman, who was my, uh, what I would say my first mentor there, uh, working with the athletic training staff uh, and putting myself in a position where I was also working with the strength staff to make sure that my shoulder was functioning as good as possible so that I could play throughout the rest of the season, maybe not 100%, but to a certain level in which I could still contribute to the team. My shoulder felt really bad, really well by the end of the year, uh, and it put me in a situation where I was second guessing myself. Maybe do I need surgery? Do I not need surgery? Surgery being something that's permanent, also not being something that was guaranteed. So I went through another summer of physical therapy, and here I am. The x-ray or MRI is not going to really look much different. The muscles most likely have recovered to a certain extent, but that articular cartilage not really being all that much different. Um, that leads me to what we're going to talk about today, where I had a shoulder injury. There is something called a hip labrum. I have a shoulder labrum injury. Rotator cuff muscles support the shoulder joint. There's a lot of muscles that support your hip joint as well. Having an appreciation that when we are having some kind of complaints of tightness, tension, and even pain, uh, there's many strategies that we can do to ideally put our body in a position to be able to have access to the joint, right? Let's think of full range of motion. And for the sake of analogies, I'm gonna say having full access to the encyclopedia from A to Z. And then not only having the mobility or access, but then being able to use that range of motion in things like running, squats, lunges, jumping, step ups. That is using the vocabulary. So putting words together with the access to the encyclopedia. So in a situation where we are talking hip mobility, we'll talk first about the structure of the joint. The hip, like the shoulder, is a very, very mobile joint. It can go a lot of different directions. We will break it down into three planes, forward, backward, side to side, and then a rotational component. So forward and backward being one plane of movement, side to side, second plane, rotational, Third, you can go two directions in each of those planes. So I've got four backwards, side to side, internal or external rotation. We will be doing things today to look at mobility in all of those three planes. Ideally giving you very, very simple strategies to focus on and incorporate in your routine. When people think mobility, they often think stretching. They often think of uh, you know, flexibility. Those are words that will come to mind. What I want you to think of with mobility, and I've said it a couple times, is just access. Can I access uh, all as aspects of my joint so that I can surface the joint as much as possible, allowing me to share stress through the joint? In addition, knowing that if I can share stress through the joint, I'm most likely sharing and distributing stress among the muscles around the joint as well. If I can take muscles through a full range of motion, contracting and relaxing, and I'm also surfacing the joint as much as possible in a controlled fashion, that most likely is a recipe for joint health and muscle health. When we think of things like overuse, often we're gonna see restrictions in access, and we might be in a position too 
where we're only accessing certain areas of the joint, which could potentially lead to accelerated use of that aspect of the joint. So access is what we're gonna be going after today with our mobility workshop. And ideally you'll have more access to do things that you enjoy doing. If we're talking about flexibility, I also wanna make sure that I mention that more is not necessarily more better, that there is adequate. The last analogy I'm gonna leave you with before we jump into the actual movement or lab portion of today is that I want you to think about movement and access a lot like a seesaw. If I have a very short seesaw, it's not very fun, it's not very enjoyable, I can't really do a lot of things to uh, you know, experience fitness or really enjoy myself as much. I also could have a very, very high seesaw that might be a little bit scary and it might also put me in a situation where it's harder to control. So there is an adequate amount uh, given the fact that many of the people today, I imagine are in a situation where they would consider themselves to be active adults or at least they're trying to be more active. Uh, we probably don't need extremes when it comes to range of motion. Oftentimes when I think of extremes when it comes to range of motion, it's things like gymnasts, um, arm range of motion like baseball players, but these extremes coming more in sports specific populations. So I have a yoga mat behind me. I'm gonna go through three very, very easy stretches that you can do on your own. I will show you a forward angle and a side angle, and they will address all different three uh, of the three planes of motion that I talked about earlier. The first one that we're gonna get into is what I'll call a half kneel, and it's gonna be a hip flexor stretch, okay? So it's gonna stretch the front of the hips. We will be in the bottom of a lunge. I'm gonna scoot this back just a little bit, okay? One foot forward, and I will have my foot underneath my knee to start. I can put my hands on my thigh, and I'm just gonna weight shift forward, okay? And I'm gonna return. Weight shift forward and return. As I shift forward, I should feel a little bit of a build up here. If your knee is uncomfortable, put a little bit more of a cushion underneath of it. You could use a couch pillow. That frequently is something that people will be able to use very, very easily. If you're looking at this from the side, one thing that I will point out is I always like to have the back toe tucked and put myself in a position where things are a little bit more locked in on that back leg. Then put my hand on my knee and I could be taking my knee forward. If I don't feel as much of a stretch, I'm gonna step that foot out in front of my knee further, weight shift forward and return. For the sake of today, we're gonna be doing this on a two second tempo and then return. One, 1,000, two, 1,000 and return. If you notice, shoulders to hips staying relatively the same. I could even put my hands on my hips just to make sure that I'm not going forward and then rounding my back as well. I'm gonna make sure that I keep everything else the same so that I isolate exactly where I'm looking to get that stretch. I'll show you the other side. One thing that you, you can add if you want a little bit more stretch is you can squeeze your glute on the side of your down knee. So I would squeeze, shift, one 1,000, two 1,000, and return, squeeze, shift, one 1,000, two 1,000, and return. There are ways to progress this, okay? And in order to progress it, I could add in my arm, okay? So the same side of the down knee, I would reach up as I shift forward, squeeze, shift, and reach, squeeze, shift, and reach, okay? Stretching the front of the hip flexor and the quad. Another thing that I could do is if you had access to a wall, okay, or a couch, you could imagine if I have my foot back up on a couch that's right here, or I can put myself in a position where I can hold here, then I could also weight shift as well. This would be more advanced. If you wanted to find a happy medium between this or a couch, if you have a foam roller, you can imagine if I had my shin up on a foam roller, it would increase this angle on this leg as well, okay? So the way to make that most comfortable, just to recap, put something underneath your down knee, 
This is the bottom of a lunge, okay? I would start out just by shifting back and forth. I could add in a squeeze to increase the stretch. I could add in a reach to increase the stretch. I also could do things to increase the angle on that back leg or prop the shin or foot up on that back leg. What we're shooting for is a pulling sensation. More stretch is not necessarily more better. Mild to moderate stretch is what we would be shooting for. Okay, and I typically tell people I dose this anywhere eight to 15 repetitions, two second pause. You could start out doing less range of motion, gradually building up. What I will say with this, and also before we go on to the next two positions, is that you might find if you are more restricted on one particular motion than the other, that would be the one that you want to focus on. And you also, even for the same stretch, could have a difference on right versus left. If you have a situation where you're noticing more restrictions for a specific movement or a specific side, that would be something where you might be doing things a little bit differently. Maybe you don't do the routine the same. Maybe you don't even do the sides the same. For example, if the right side was more restricted, you would go right, left, and then right. Okay, so for the first one we did, it was the bottom of a lunge. It was a hip flexor stretch that could pro progress um, to higher levels. This one is gonna be more of an adductor or groin type of stretch. It's also gonna, gonna require you to be on your knee. So, slide back here. Right knee, left knee, okay? I could start with my knee under my hip. Okay, I'm gonna scoot back a little bit more. So I could start with my knee under my hip. Eventually, I might want to get to a point where my knee is outside of my hip. So there's a little bit of an angle here. My knee is outside of my hip. Okay, I'm going to put my hands down, and I would bring my hands forward, walk them forward, and I would drop my hips forward towards the ground. I should feel a little bit of a stretch, potentially on both groin, but definitely on the inside of the straight leg. Then I'm going to shift back. Okay, my hands moving. The stretch should change a little bit. If you get any knee discomfort, do not focus on the one going back as much, but the one going forward, okay? My hands are moving as I go. I will show you the forward angle here, and then we will get into the side-to-side -side version, okay? So now you see things from the side. This leg is straight. I am starting here. You almost shouldn't see my other leg. My knee is under my hip to start. Now I can get my knee outside of my hip a little bit. My hips come forward, push back, hands, sit back, and forward, okay? I'm trying to isolate my hips. I'm trying not to arch my back. I'm gonna tuck my hips under as I come forward. And then I'm shifting back here. This is called an adductor rock. One, 1,000, two, 1,000 and I'm slowly shifting out of that position, okay? That should be something, once again, mild to moderate stretch. Maybe you notice a difference in terms of the size during the activity, but ideally done uh, before your activities that you're performing. So if you're running, squatting, lunging, something along those lines or performing side to side activities, that would be a great thing to throw in. It's an adductor rock. You can also uh, find all of these on our Rehab to Perform YouTube channel. The third one, and actually my favorite one, because I do think adding rotation typically will free things up. Um, uh, I almost feel like quicker than some of the other stretches. So if I might find myself being very, very tense, tight, adding some kind of rotational uh, dynamic or rotational focused mobility drill will typically have a big payoff. So, what you're going to do, and I'm going to make sure that I change the angle of this just a little bit, wrong way, there we go, okay, so we're sitting here, my feet are wider, right, feet are wider than my knees and my hips, so they're going out, my heels are going to stay relatively fixed in the same spot, my knees will go to one side, my other hand is on the ground, okay, 
Then I'm gonna come back to my starting position. I'm gonna take my knees to the other side. Knee down, knee down, other hand down. Okay, what I wanna try to do now that I'm comfortable with what I'm doing, try to keep both hands down, try to touch both knees. Maybe you can, maybe you can't do it. It's not to say this hand can't slide a little bit. Okay, but we're going back and forth. Knees touching, knees touching. If that's a little hard, straighten your legs a little bit, okay? Might be a little bit easier in that situation. Might be also harder for some people. Everybody's built a little bit differently, okay? This is called a shin box progression. Shin, we're kind of making this box here, okay? Now, what I want you to try to do Use your hands to get to a spot. Take both hands off. Try to hold. Now try to come out of that position, okay? Put your hands down, drop your knees, hands off, come out of that position. Again, hands down, knees to a side, hands off, up, and down, knees down, hands off. Now, the tough part, okay? Drop your knees to one side, come out of it. Drop your knees to one side, come out of it. And we're trying to do this. All right, this is our look my no hands version, okay? Our knees are touching. Now the only thing that I would do to progress this, it's a little harder because I got this wall here, is I would lower myself over top of my knee. Okay, so if you saw me from the side and I was coming towards you, I would lower myself and come out of it. I could use my hands to go down and then try not to use my hands to come out. Use your hands to get into the position. Try not to use your hands to come out of it. So I would use my hands to go down, not use my hands to come out, use my hands to go down, and hands to come out. So this would involve, right, just to make sure this is my rotational plane. This hip is internally rotating, that one's externally rotating. But these are shin box progressions also is a very, very good transitional activity to make sure that our hips are able to transition and transfer us, okay? But ideally, putting us in a situation where we can pivot, okay? For those of you who like to dance, you need to make sure that I've got internal and external rotation, okay? Now, I'll give you a quick regression, um, or I should say a standing activity, that looks a lot like the first two things that we did. And then I will do a couple brief standing stretches that are also maybe a little bit more challenging. So, okay, so maybe somebody can't get to the ground, you will find yourself in a position um, where you're gonna stand, okay? And you've got your feet like this, my heel is up on the back, I've got the wall in front of me, and I'm shifting forward. I should feel a stretch here as I shift forward again. Shift, and then back. I could even bend the back knee a little bit, but if I want to emphasize stretch here, I'm gonna keep that back knee relatively straight. Okay, I could step the foot forward a little bit in the front. Shift, okay. What you're noticing is I should be keeping hips to shoulders relatively the same, and out, okay. This side, heel up, foot flat, shift, stretch should be felt here. I could squeeze, shift, I could also squeeze, shift, reach with the same arm as the back leg. Okay, so that's the standing version of that hip flexor stretch. Now, if I had access to a wall, okay, I also can go into the wall, do a little bit of a lunge, and now I feel a little bit of a groin stretch. So instead of doing the adductor rock where you're on your knees, I could go here, okay? I've got the support of the wall, I'm leaning into it, lean, 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 and then pushing out. I'm getting a little bit of work on this leg while also getting a stretch on this one, okay? A little bit of a lateral lunge. I could switch, do the same thing on the other side. I've got my forearm on the wall, helping me support. Drop, a little stretch here, and then come out, drop, Stretch, this leg's working a little bit, but the forearm's really helping me stabilize, and then I'm popping up, okay? So those would allow you to have a, uh, an easier time doing the hip flexor stretch and the adductor stretch. And then if you wanna challenge yourself a little bit, two, or sorry, three stretches 
Um, and really there's some stability here as well that I would recommend. First thing, I've got a kickstand toe touch. So I'm gonna almost be like I'm balancing on one leg, but I got a little kickstand here. And then you're just gonna reach down. And then up. This is allowing me to control my access to my hip joint, okay? And I'm taking muscles through stretching and contracting. If I'm looking at you, I just take that foot back. It's like a little bit of a toe touch, touch, and then up. This eventually would progress us to a point where we're focusing a lot more just on control, where I elevate that back foot, okay? That's called a single leg deadlift or a single leg balance reach for anybody who's curious. Then a more hamstring focused stretch could be one where instead of the kickstand going back, the kickstand goes forward. I'm gonna push my hips back, reach down, touch, and then up. I could switch, heel toe. If you look at the relationship of my toe on this foot, heel on that one, hips back. This knee bends a little bit, the other leg stays straight, and up. Bend, straight, shift, and reach from the front. Kickstand up front. Shifting my hips back, bending, straight leg, reach. Bending, straight leg, hips back, and reach. That would be a heel-toe reach. And then this last one, you could potentially use the wall to support yourself, okay? So you're going to do like this, little figure four. You would bring your leg up above your knee. You'd be sitting down, potentially reaching towards your foot. Leg here. Touch, and then up, okay? Figure four. You don't necessarily have to reach your foot. You could reach down as low as you want to. So, those are a lot of different options. Just to reinforce, when we think mobility, we should be thinking access to a joint. Full access to a joint allows us to distribute stress. Physical activity is a physical stress. Ideally, I'm distributing the stress evenly or as much as possible around the joint and then I'm also going to be able to distribute stress to muscles that support that joint um, in a bal more balanced fashion okay so also following that up where access is something that we want to make sure that we just have an adequate amount ideally for day-to-day -day living A to Z and then after we have access we need to focus on controlling that access that being the stability component um, so some of those drills that we did at the end, having a little bit more of a stability component that really, really lock in or reinforce some of the access or mobility that we have practiced. Does anybody have any questions who is on the call or anything more specific? I'm not hearing any questions yet or seeing any. Um, how many repetitions should this should should this happen? Uh, and is this part of a pre? I'm assuming this is part of a pre workout. Can it also be done in post workout as well? Yes. What I would say is for you know people that are in a good position, they have relatively good access to their joints. They're already relatively flexible. Adding it in to the, the to the first part before they actually get into their workout is probably best. They're going to ideally increase their access, go through a full range of motion through their joints a little bit, prep their tissues for higher level activity that involves tempo, right? It could be increasing the speed, weights, um, doing things that are a little bit more dynamic in the actual workout itself. For people who are a little bit more functioning on a short seesaw that I mentioned earlier, and they just don't have a lot of access to begin with, this is where I would incorporate some of these things pre, post, and then potentially in uh, their own sessions during the week. But once they would get to a point where that seesaw was a little bit higher, they found themselves holding on to that access a little bit more, then they would just go into a situation where it's pre. I would recommend making sure that you have three stretches, kind of like we went over today, a stretch to work on front to back mobility, a stretch to work on you know side to side lateral mobility, and a stretch to really reinforce that rotational mobility. If you hit each of those three different areas, both sides, eight to 15 reps, getting into a stretch, coming out of it um, at a two second count, you know, you'll find yourself probably taking somewhere between 45 seconds to a minute um, on, on, on each side, being able to move past that and then getting into your workout. But ideally doing some things 
at, at, at some point when you have better access, um, that will look a little bit more like exercises. When, when you have more access and you have more competency, maybe you're just doing lunges to reinforce what hip flexor um, you know, a, a mobility that you already have. You already have that front to back mobility. When you get really, really good with some of the lateral movements, maybe you're just working on a, a, you know, a little bit of a lateral lunge. So you're doing a higher level preparatory ex exercise before you jump into your session. But our warm up or our prep work is going to kind of meet our level of preparedness before a session. But ideally, we get uh, to a point where we're acquiring competencies and we're able to do higher level stretches, higher level prep work, which eventually will turn into the fact that we're able to do higher level things during our workout as well. So they should kind of go hand in hand. Is it, hopefully that makes sense. But if not, let me know. Yeah, all of that was fantastic. Uh, thank you. I think everyone could take something or take all of that and be able to make it happen today, uh, if not while we, were, while we were discussing it. Can you tell us a little bit more about Rehab to Perform, uh, where you're located, uh, and, and how folks can get in touch with you? And then speak a little bit to, you are the CEO, you're the founder of Rehab to Perform. Tell us uh, you know, how things are going, how it came. We're, uh, our audience is all startup small businesses, so maybe just a little nugget as a uh, fitness in the fitness category about being a CEO and founder of, of a company that's growing. Yeah. I mean, I think for, for me, if I just start back just to kind of, uh, you know, put everybody on a, a level footing with our company, uh, we started at the end of 2014 in Frederick, um, really just in a small sublet space. We had shared gym access. We could have access to the indoor turf fields when people weren't on there, but we were in the middle of uh, you know two indoor turf fields up at Frederick Indoor Sports Center. Um, the beginning, I can remember things like paying my mortgage on PayPal. I can remember things like skipping myself on payroll, right? And I know you kind of get some chuckles there, um, but I can remember really feeling like I was high effort and very very little return. And it was just through um, me seeking out mentorship. It was through me going through like small business development center, score some of the other startup you know, incubator places where you're around people who are trying to accomplish similar things to you. Uh, and then really making sure that I was keeping myself in check. How could I continue to be mindful of what was working and what wasn't? How could I be uh, self-aware enough to improve myself, knowing that if I couldn't continue to improve myself, the business also wasn't going to improve itself too. Um, one of the biggest things that I was able to go through was eventually Goldman Sachs' 10,000 Small Businesses Program. Um, that was run up at Johns Hopkins. It was just an exceptional program for people who were already in small business that needed like a, an MBA type of hands-on education. So that was tremendous for me. Uh, I was actually going through that when we were opening up our second location in Germantown in 2017. And been fortunate enough, we opened up Mount Airy last Memorial Day weekend and then opened up uh, Bethesda, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, December 30th, right before this whole pandemic happened. So it's been an interesting couple weeks. It's been an interesting journey. I can tell you a lot of the wrong things to do. I can also say at this point, uh, we've figured out a lot. Um, I am in a situation where, uh, you know, we're just trying to manage being a fitness focused physical therapy company, which is more challenging in that a lot of our partners actually that we are working with on a regular basis aren't able to be open. We are open. We've had a big hit obviously with regards to our numbers and then how we've pivoted during this time is actually focusing a lot more on supporting our services when things get more normal so we've been working on creating ebooks we've been working on uh, email drip campaigns that support certain diagnosis codes we've been working on uh, you know increasing and developing relationships in the community surrounding serving veterans um, with uh, concussion care as well um, we've been trying to be more engaging on social media with regards to either our professional community through lives or Zoom calls, um, and then also doing things to, like today, serve people through uh, workshops, ideally delivering information, delivering value, starting conversations that lead to lifelong wellness. I always tell people that we'd rather see you outside of the office than in the office, but if we have to see you in the office, um, we'll make sure that we're doing our best to make sure that you're, you're, you're getting to a point quickly and safely um, outside of the office. Our, our goal is always empowerment, um, 
with, with people. Ideally, we empowered you today with information, empowered you with new strategies, new ways of thinking of things. And this goes hand in hand with, I think, just how we, we run things from a company standpoint. But I'm a big believer in more of a decentralized model of leadership. Um, I think if we can get an org chart less top down and more just synergistic, uh, I've heard it called a, a, a circle, but ideally creating autonomy in, in the people that we're working with, making them feel like they have decision making power, making them feel like they're in a situation where they have enough information to be effective when faced with challenges. Um, and I think that's a, a huge reason why we've been able to pivot into things like tele rehab and even telework from the front desk relatively uh, quickly. We've been able to do things in a, in a short period of time because of the, the cohesiveness and that autonomy that, especially in a situation where we have four locations where we have people that have to, to think quickly, think on their feet to, to best serve and protect uh, the people that are coming through our doors. That's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and you mentioned several uh, resources that all of our members uh, we've either shared or uh, we do have access to those resources. You mentioned SCORE, the Goldman Sachs program. Uh, those are all things that our members also have access to. Um, so, so feel free to contact uh, Karen or myself at Marketing at Launch Workplaces so you guys can better understand uh, what is out there and what's available. But thank you uh, for a wealth of knowledge uh, that I definitely do not have on fitness. And this is, this is fantastic. I think everyone can take something out of this and apply it to their, either their daily routine or starter routine, uh, or just work on stretching, uh, keeping the muscles moving. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, uh, Jim and Becky and others who have joined along the way, uh, for the live edition of uh, workout Wednesday. Thank you, Josh. Um, yeah, appreciate it. and, uh, Look forward to hopefully doing this again and uh, getting out and seeing you at one of your centers uh, here shortly uh, when we can all yes. get out, uh, out of the house. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And like I mentioned, if anything pops up, we are doing tele-rehab in addition to in-person sessions. Obviously, fall on, um, for us, from a licensure standpoint, Maryland Department of Public Health. So um, doing our best just to keep moving forward and help you. Uh, on your journey, ideally move, moving forward and, and bettering yourself. So thanks for the time today. As I mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.